Hold up a second. You guys remember Google Stadia? I mean, it seemed to have just come and go like a fart in the wind. Uh, it crops up every now and then. Exclusive demos, as an example. We played Immortals Phoenix Rising on it, and it ran just fine. It ran as you expected. But Google Stadia is making a little bit of hay right now. And it's making a little bit of hay because the people who actually use Google Stadia, which, by the way, in case you didn't know, there are actually people who use Google Stadia, are reporting that, hey, all these issues that people are having with Cyberpunk 2077 on last-gen hardware or even like PlayStation 5 and some lower-spec PCs, not a problem on Stadia. In fact, the game runs better than it does on the Xbox Series X, which is saying something because the game actually runs pretty well on the xbox series x not as well as it runs on like a super high-end pc but it still runs very very well of the console versions it is the one that seems to have the best performance the least amount of bugs and issues uh so yeah xbox series x kind of a win for that but then stadia comes along you don't have to spend 500 dollars on a system you do have to spend 60 bucks on a game but the game just works and you can play it on your pc on your tv if you have the correct sort of device to stream it to your tv it can run on your phone obviously computer monitors laptops anything 1080p close to max settings ray tracing on no problem even higher resolutions depending on your internet connection this is interesting to me because all we've heard since Google Stadia's pricing announcements is we should be rejecting Google Stadia. Google Stadia is garbage. Google Stadia doesn't work as well as they say it does. Google Stadia's pricing model is stupid. It should be a subscription service. They shouldn't be charging full price AAA things for games that you lose access to if Google Stadia goes away. After all, Google has the ability to push one button and just delete Google Stadia. Google has a history, a notorious history, of getting rid of products uh, like that. I mean, maybe one of the most well-known ones in the YouTube sphere might be something called Google Plus. Remember that? Gone. So Google has a history of starting up these really interesting ideas, never really seeing them to their full potential, and then dropping it. But here's the thing with Google Stadia. While it's a running joke in the industry, at least among gamers, that, ha, who plays on Google Stadia? It turns out quite a few people are actually playing on Google Stadia. Quite a few people are actually enjoying their time playing on Google Stadia. Some even saying they're playing Cyberpunk 2077 just fine over 4G LTE on their phones when they're at a coffee shop. Which, should they be at a coffee shop doing that in the middle of a pandemic? That's a, you know... I guess a personal choice that they've made, but still. It looks like Google Stadia is turning out to be an extremely viable gaming platform. What I find interesting about this is Google Stadia is not alone in the streaming space. We know about xCloud coming, which has been highly touted as having a very, very successful beta on Android. Uh, we've heard, obviously, we got GeForce Now is out there as a streaming service. Granted, it's a different type of streaming service. It's sort of like Google Stadia, but different because you buy the games on, like, Steam or good old games or whatever, and then you can stream it through GeForce Now so you can take advantage of a more powerful system. There is a bit of a downfall to it. One, obviously, we know a lot of publishers have been pulling their games away from GeForce Now, even though GeForce Now never thought they needed permission to do this in the first place because... Hello, the consumers bought the copy of the game. They can't use GeForce now. It's like me buying, you know, uh, Cyberpunk 2077 for PC, but then installing it on my friend's PC and then always playing it on my friend's PC. What's it matter? I still bought the game. That was GeForce Now's argument, but from a legal perspective, that wasn't the case, and they've lost a lot of developer support. But the downfall of GeForce Now is that while you could get super high-end uh, performance of games... It might even be the best alternative out there from you know beyond spending three thousand plus dollars to build a sick gaming PC with a thirty ninety and a fifty nine fifty X and all the best RAM and bells and whistles. Sometimes there's a queue. For Cyberpunk in particular, there is a queue. 
Uh, it could take up to an hour at times before you're able to play the game because they give you access through streaming to what amounts to a fully decked out spec uh, top of the line PC. So they only have so many of those in their farm, so they kind of yeah, have to, you know, wait for people to stop playing before they can let other people in on those particular PCs for a game such as Cyberpunk. So it is a downfall of GeForce now, but it is technically a streaming competitor, but I'll be a different one because you don't buy the games directly from them. Uh, obviously, Amazon Luna, we all know like that's a, a product coming out. Uh, I'm in the beta for that. Uh, might do some thoughts on that eventually here. Uh, and th these are all competitive products. It seems that, that Luna, for sure, we know is a subscription model. Uh, there's the base subscription, and then you can subscribe to like different companies or whatever like uh ubisoft is going to be on there and under a different subscription a very interesting way to deliver this this almost feels like the cable tv route where like you have your base package for cable tv but then you can add like hbo or stars for like set fees that seems to be maybe what they're doing here on amazon luna uh x cloud the big thing that it has is that it is going to be tied in with game pass as well so like if you're if you want to stream games on xCloud and you have a Game Pass subscription, if those games are available through to stream, you'll be able to not, not spend any extra money. Uh, so it's already sort of through proxy of Game Pass, a game subscription service. So kind of like a Netflix of games, as it were, quite literally on the streaming side. These are vastly different approaches. So full AAA pricing, um, streaming, but like cable package style with Amazon. Uh, where you can like select different packages and in different companies to add in, uh, kind of pick and choose your poison and how much you want to spend. Uh, you also then have uh, you know Xbox kind of doing the traditional streaming route, and then with Google Stadia doing full game pricing. This is interesting, and it's interesting because for the first time, maybe since Google Stadia came out, I can't sit here and tell you. You shouldn't use Google Stadia. I've actually had people on Twitter that follow my channel defending Google Stadia, explaining to me the benefits to them, that they don't have the crazy fast internet I do. For those who don't know, my internet isn't crazy fast. I don't have fiber, but I have really fast internet compared to most people. I have a business line cable internet connection at my house, so I get about 30 up, which isn't that much. Some of you guys with just standard home packages from Comcast or whatever can get better than that. But then I also have... 500 to one gig down it kind of varies throughout the day it's supposed to be a full gig down which is close to fiber but i don't quite to be honest i think the highest i've ever seen it at any given point was like 912 down and that was only for a, a few seconds otherwise it's usually between you know 500 and 800 it bounces around uh based on the traffic on the network at the time so that's that, that's really fast internet. That's way good enough for any sort of streaming service that exists. So streaming services, in terms of speed, uh, not an issue in my house. I have a really nice uh, router, a really nice um, modem. So it, it's all good, right? I, I have great internet in my house now. It's just, it feels weird to talk positively about Stadia. Like It's been kind of the butt of jokes for gamers for a long time, but... Were we too quick to dismiss Stadia as a viable gaming option? I mean, I've seen arguments from people using it that, hey, unlike other Google services, Google won't get rid of Stadia, giving some pretty decent arguments as for why they won't, such as most of the products they've gotten rid of in the past were not paid for services. So they weren't subscription-based, and they did not have you know, you know, purchases tied into it. Remember, Google probably gets 30% of every uh, cut of every game you buy on the, on the product as well. Google Stadia is an alternative in a field that maybe needs to exist. I love Game Pass on Xbox Series X, right? I'm a huge Game Pass fan. I always thought the key for streaming was going to be subscriptions, kind of like what Amazon Luna is doing. The thing is, some people don't like subscription fees. Because here's what happens with subscriptions. This happens with Game Pass. Games aren't there forever, right? You, On Game Pass, you can't control what games are added and removed. Same's going to be true on Amazon Luna. You can't control what games are available. On Google Stadia, if the game was ever available on the platform and you bought it, you will always have access to play that game. They don't just remove it from the library and you can't play it anymore because you own a license to play that game so is google stadia potentially the future 
Now, maybe not Google Stadia itself, but a service like that. Is streaming really that close to being extremely viable? I mean, if you want to buy Cyberpunk 2077, but don't want to deal with performance issues, but also can't get your hand on an Xbox Series X or PlayStation 5, or build a, a super expensive uh, PC, and you have good internet at your house, I mean, I'm talking good, like 60 down, 10 up, at least that, get it for Google Stadia. I, I can't believe I'm actually saying this. You want to play Cyberpunk, buy it for Google Stadia. It's going to outperform pretty much everything. It's going to look best on it unless you have that top-tier PC hardware. Obviously, alternatively, don't have great internet, buy it for one of the other platforms. Something you lose in spending that 60 bucks is resale value, but you lose that with digital purchases on any system. So I think that this is something to consider. I'm not like super passionate about it. I'm not sitting here touting Stadia as, you know, this big future of gaming. But I will say, today, surprisingly, at the end of 2020, Google Stadia is a viable gaming platform. One, I can understand why consumers would actually choose to buy for it, even if they own a different platform. And I didn't think I'd be saying that this far in to Google Stadia launching, which by the way, it had some really weird launch where Pro was first last year. You know, I, I didn't think we'd be at this point, but here we are, Google freaking Stadia. We'll have to see how xCloud and Luna can stack up once they go fully public. All right, folks, I am Nathaniel Rubble Chance from Nintendo Prime. Thank you so much for tuning in. Let me know your thoughts on Google Stadia down in the comments. I play, I, I'm sure we're going to see a lot of people hating on it, but hey, my experiences with it every time I try it have been massively positive. So I can't even say like from personal experience, I think it's a horrible service because it's been pretty good. I actually have no complaints. I couldn't tell you if I was even latency wise. I couldn't tell you uh, if I was playing locally or not. For all I know, I'm playing on my Series X. It doesn't really, it's good. It's damn good.